Wow, I hope that is all leaking out of his car. <laughs> I took my daughter to the big NASCAR race in Atlanta. That was exciting. We got some NASCAR fans in here. <laughs> Three. <laughs> I'm doing the joke anyway. <laughs> I cannot believe they let beer sponsor the race cars. <laughs> if you have a motor oil company, and you sponsor a race car. That makes sense. They use motor oil in the race car during the race. You can't use beer in the race car during the race. That would be horrible. Brad Keselowski in the Miller Lite Ford just got pulled over by the pace car. They're gonna make him walk the start finish line. That was his third lap in the wrong direction. If I was going 200 miles an hour and I was spinning out of control, I'm gonna be sponsored by some stuff I'm gonna need. <laughs> like Fruit of the Loom. <laughs> Cause I'm gonna need a new pair of undershorts. <laughs> Them announcers would be like, there's Austin in the pits. Wow, I hope that is all leaking out of his car. <laughs> We just figured out how come he's number two. <laughs> Some people think auto racing is boring. That's okay. I have a great way to make it more fun. Let's put the wives in the car with the driver. <laughs> I wanna see him go 500 miles with her going, you're falling too close, you're going too fast, you're scaring me. Put some kids in that back seat. Are we there? Are ya? Dad, you, you're losing. You suck. He's touching me. That would be fun with the family in the car. The announcers would be like, Jeff Gordon just pulled on the pit road. Looks like his wife has to pee again. Caution flag on the track, there's a garage sale. <laughs> Johnson's parked on turn three. He's out of the car. He is whooping his kid's butt. <laughs> kids need their hand in whoop nowadays, don't they? <laughs> ah, come on, let's go find some. My dad did not mess around, buddy. He'd be like, all right, you son of a gun. You go get my dad gone belt. I took my time on that sadistic scavenger hunt. <laughs> I'd be in his closet going, I can't find it. He'd go, where's my baseball bag? Oh, I found your belt. <laughs> he had a cowboy belt. He had his name on the back. I did not dress out for P.E. I didn't want them people in the shower looking at my butt going, who's Bob? <laughs> I have been married a long time. And I, uh, I would never say anything negative about my wife's appearance, even if it was true. I know better. My wife is not quite that delicate when it comes to my feelings. We were getting ready to go out the other night. She goes, you look fat in that. I was in the shower. <laughs> Women spend their whole life thinking they look fat, even when they look okay. Men spend their whole life thinking they look okay, even when they're fat. Don't go to bed angry, that's her motto. She has not slept in 14 years. <laughs> she is a wonderful woman and she knows me and I just had a birthday and she got me a, uh, she knows I'm kind of a nerd so she got me a fishing game for my computer. Have you seen some of these new computer games? This thing is so realistic. I was sitting there drinking beer, <laughs> catching fish. I stood up in the boat whizzed all over the living room carpet.
Oh, I laughed too. I was there. <laughs> the carpet cleaner guy came the next day. He's like, uh, y'all are lying. You ain't got no dog. I said, we do too. He ran away right after he wrote my name. I love to fish. When I catch fish, I keep them. Some people throw them back in the water. That is stupid. A hunter would never shoot a deer and then patch his butt up with Band-Aids. They call it catch and release. The fish call it dang traumatic. He's back in that water, go, what in the world was that all about? Thanks to you and your hook, I can blow bubbles right through my face. Now I'm late for school. We swim in a school. I know it's stupid, I'm trying to be clean. Work with me. <laughs> this is what we do. We, uh, comedians, we travel all the time. We fly a lot. It's horrible. These flight attendants are mean. I was on my way out here. She looked right at me. She goes, trash. I go, sky waitress. You want a name call? I'm your Huckleberry. We stay in lousy hotels sometimes. I was doing a private party. I was back in Arkansas. I get back to my hotel after the big show. I killed a cockroach in my room. I scooped it up in a plastic cup. I took it to the front desk. I showed it to the lady. I said, look at that right there. She gave me my money back for that hotel room. I know. I take cockroaches everywhere I go now. <laughs> So I have to tell you this, I, uh, I decided to kind of get honest with the, my uh, audience and just kind of open up to them and tell them all about me. Even though I wear this cowboy hat, I was born in Florida. I know, you're thinking, wow, sure, a lot of cowboys come from Florida, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> Especially from South Florida, that's where I was born. And uh, I tell you, I hate it down there. Math in South Florida was different than math anywhere else in the whole United States. Our questions in elementary school were like, um, Jose has a speedboat going 74 miles an hour, carrying 14 kilos of illicit substance. The Coast Guard has an airplane going 183 miles an hour. How long till the kilos sink to the bottom of the ocean? They made us take Spanish in first grade. First grade, first day of school, they give you this big workbook. You learn stuff like, como estas, how are you? Me llamo Juan, my name is John. Then you go to some of the places where people only speak Spanish, like Cozumel or Honduras or California. And you, um, <laughs> I thought that's how you're gonna react to that. <laughs> you go, como estas, me llamo Juan. That guy goes, <laughs> you got the workbook. <laughs> i tell you what, I, uh, I've always been a comedian all my life. I guess I started when I was a teenager and uh, it was either do this or be in the military because I uh, really wanted to do that. I have a lot of respect for the men and women that serve in the United States. And uh, we got anybody in here that's in the military? There he is right there, y'all clap for that guy. <laughs> women love a man in uniform, don't you ladies? You know why? Because it means he's got a job. <laughs> and he can take orders. <laughs> now, 
and eat lousy food. <laughs> so I took all the tests to be in the army when I was a kid, but uh, they ran these commercials back in the 80s to try to get people to join, and uh, they scared me. <laughs> you probably don't remember this one, but one of them was like, uh, this guy would go, we do more before 9 a.m. than most of you people do all day. <laughs> I thought it was a warning. Oh my, I better not go there. I don't get up till noon. You got a night shift, I can shoot people at night. It's nice that you can go out to a comedy club with the economy the way things are right now, it's ridiculous. The credit card people called me the other day. They go, you are behind on your payment and you are over your limit. I said, I'm real sorry about that, but my government is setting a bad example. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look around, those are Republicans clapping. Look at them. <laughs> Where are you at, Republicans? Clap. Where are you at, Democrats? Clap. The rest of them are out protesting right now. I think we can take them anyway. They don't like guns. Because the government doesn't give them away free. We're splitting the crowd right down the middle, aren't we? <laughs> if global warming is real, where are all the snowflakes coming from? That's what I want to know. <laughs> These are just jokes. It doesn't matter what party you affiliate with. We love you. That Trump is something else. He's going to have a wall around Taco Bell by the time he's done. I ain't kidding. <laughs> He's gonna get the users of illicit substance from Colorado to pay for it. <laughs> I grew up poor. I had to wear hand-me-downs. It was awful. I have an older sister. First day of school was terrible. The little witch next to me had on the same outfit. Now I'm not sure if I'm really supposed to go to the bathroom at Target. Oh, that was too far? When I was a kid, my mama bought me one pair of jeans. One pair. She bought them real long. Then she hemmed them up. When I'd grow a little, she'd let them out a little. I'd grow a little more, she'd let them out a little more. You could tell how old I was by counting the rings down my leg. <laughs> Things are good now that we live in Georgia. And uh, my wife and I, we wanted to buy our own house. Clap if you own a house. Right. So uh, first you have to go look. So we drove around looking for a house. We passed through this people's neighborhood and uh, they had a sign in their front yard that said, uh, house for sale by owner. Yeah, who in the world that's gonna sell you a house? <laughs> Bob, yeah, me and the other uh, people in the homeowners association been talking. We are sick and tired of you coming out here in them boxers with the hole in it, <laughs> bending over and picking up that newspaper. Pack it up, buddy. <laughs> House for sale by neighbor. <laughs> Some of you are like, wow, I want to do that. <laughs> when I was growing up, we had a mobile home. It was horrible. People would make fun of us. They go, ain't you afraid of tornadoes? No. I survived one of the worst ones ever. I got a brand new barbecue grill from somebody who didn't. <laughs> If it's on my roof, it's mine. <laughs> People tell you stupid ways to keep safe when the tornado comes. 
They go get in the bathtub, pull the mattress over ye. I had a neighbor almost died doing that. He had a water bed. <laughs> and a really nice barbecue grill at one time. <laughs> when I was a kid, there was a little girl next door. She was about the same age as me. I had a crush on her so bad. Her parents would make her do chores. She'd get out there every day and trim them hedges and them little short shorts. <laughs> I was out there at night throwing down Miracle Grow. <laughs> <laughs> we ended up buying a piece of land in Georgia and uh, it was in the middle of the woods and they tore down some woods and they built us a house right in the middle of the woods. And we have deer. I thought this is gonna be amazing. I'm gonna hunt these deer in my own yard. I have a daughter who's 14. She goes, no, those are my deer. <laughs> she feeds them corn. She, she named them <laughs> after her grandmother. <laughs> and that was the end of hunting deer in my own yard. I joined a hunt club. It's an hour south of where I live. I got to get up at four o'clock in the morning. I drive all the way down there. I climb that tree in the dark. I sit there for four hours. I don't see a thing. I drive all the way home. They're standing in the driveway. <laughs> What's up? Where you been? <laughs> We're on base. <laughs> Go tell that little girl we're out of corn. I was home a couple weeks ago. <laughs> uh, my wife and I were in the kitchen. She has expectations of me because I'm the man of the house. She saw a mouse. She looks at me, she goes, kill it! I go, I can't reach that thing from on top of this chair. <laughs> she goes, you hunt deer. I go, get the rifle, I'll blow his head off. I ain't getting off this chair. <laughs> My brother goes hunting all the time. He's always gonna brag about the animals that he's killed. He's gonna tell you how far away it was and what caliber of gun he used. He goes, yeah, I got that moose from 400 yards with a seven millimeter. I go, yeah, I got that mouse from eight feet with 30 out six. <laughs> if you ever have mice, don't get the glue trap from Walmart. It don't kill them. I walked in, he's just stuck there. Man, am I glad to see you. I have messed up here something fierce. You got any goo gone? <laughs> Women laugh at that. Men go, what is goo gone? I felt horrible. I tried to help him. Turns out he pulled off of there really easily, but his legs did not. <laughs> I know, I was there. I spent the next 30 minutes building a wheel trap, a soap dish, scotch tape, and a Hot Wheels car. That's a joke, he bled to death. What are you, mice rights activists? Who cares? I don't want to hunt deer no more. I'm sick of it. All my friends hunt deer. They put them on the wall. It's the same thing in everybody's house in Georgia. I want something different. I want you to walk in and go, what in the world is that? That's my cow. <laughs> Got him with a hammer. <laughs> Looks cool next to that mouse from the joke before, I think. I hit a deer with my truck not too long ago. Knocked the fender off my truck. The deer got up and he ran away. I got out, I walked around, the fender was gone. I think that son of a gun took it with him. I bet you he's got it hanging on the wall at his house right now. <laughs> it 
So my daughter, uh, she has a boyfriend. I don't know. <laughs> Nobody's good enough for daddy's little girl, I know that. But this kid, as a child, I think he was not held enough. <laughs> Underwater. <laughs> She's only going to be young for so long. We try to do fun stuff. We go on vacation. We went snow skiing last winter. I was horrible, and they made fun of me. <laughs> I was on the easiest slope they had. All of a sudden, this little punk on a snowboard goes right across the top of one of my skis. That, that's when I figured out what the poles are for. <laughs> Now both your eyebrows are pierced. <laughs> Last summer we went on a cruise. You ever been on one of those? The boat pulls into these little places at like eight o'clock in the morning then it leaves at like five in the afternoon. Cruise ship is an amazing way to travel to places that are not safe enough to stay at overnight. <laughs> Ooh, this Jamaica is one... Oh, it's dark. Let's get out of here! <laughs> the cruise ship company put this sign on the towel rack in my bathroom on the ship. It says, uh, you can help save the environment. Use less tiles. Oh, yeah, it's my fault. It's not the billowing plumes of diesel smoke coming out of this thing. It's the extra wash rag I used to wash my backside. That's what's doing it. We went to Cozumel. It's in Mexico. You ever been there? It's pretty. Nice people. Next time you go there, run off the boat and go mow their lawn. It freaks them out. Okay, you're afraid to laugh at that one too, ain't you? We went scuba diving. The night before on the ship was a deck party. They have a Mexican buffet at midnight. Don't do that. And then get up the next morning and go scuba diving. I was gassy. I farted in my wetsuit and it would not come out. <laughs> Couldn't even get down to see the fish. I kept floating right back up. <laughs> I finally found the level of this crowd fart jokes. <laughs> and there were sharks. I don't like sharks. The instructor goes, don't worry. They're just as scared as you. Right. He's got razor sharp teeth. I got a plastic snorkel. Get back! Go ahead, bite me. I'll fart on you. I swear I will. There was a woman on the dive boat. She had a bathing suit going right out the crack of her hind end. Yeah, they call it a thong. My older brother invented that years ago. Called it a wedgie. I was looking at her going, wow, woman, somebody got you good. <laughs> you mean it's supposed to be like that? That ain't right. That's probably the noise it makes when you finally get it out of your butt. <laughs> Thong. One Christmas, we went to New York City to watch them skate in that uh, Rockefeller Center. That was interesting. You should do it. It's really fun. New York City's kind of a tough place. <laughs> Don't get lost. If you get lost in New York City, just buy an apartment and live on that street for the rest of your life. <laughs> Not me. I go up to the guy. I go, hey, you tell me how to find Rockefeller Center? That guy goes, hey, yo, sure thing, no problem. <laughs> Go down this street right here, it ain't three lights, make a left. Two blocks, make a right. Right there on the corner, you see a store. Go in there and buy a map. <laughs> Thank you, officer. <laughs> I 
My wife and I took a trip to Italy. That was exciting. We saw the Vatican. I farted in the Vatican. My wife got so mad at me. I told her this is the perfect place. They just lit all these candles. She was still mad, so I went in that booth and I apologized. What, is there no Catholics here? I know there's not. I'm entertaining myself now. I was just down in Florida. I was visiting my grandma. She's doing good. She is 100 years old. I know. She is a national treasure, no doubt. Lives by herself. Still drives. That scared you, didn't it? She just got a new van. She got the five-year loan. That's very optimistic. She's doing good. She hates that joke. She is not originally from Florida. She is from Oklahoma. Yeah, I used to go out there and spend my summers with her. She would make you go out, break a branch off a tree so she could whip your hind end with it. I don't know what was worse, the butt whipping or the 12 mile walk to a tree in Oklahoma. <laughs> One time I left my bicycle in the front yard overnight. My daddy took my bicycle. He hid it in the neighbor's barn. He wanted me to think it got stolen. He was trying to teach me responsibility. You know what I learned? Not to trust my father. <laughs> That's a good one, Daddy. I would pull that truck in tonight if I was you. <laughs> Who's got a big old pickup truck? <laughs> I got one. I got 217,000 miles on it. Four more payments and it's mine. <laughs> I was behind for a while. The guy called me from the credit company. He goes, you don't send me money. I'm going to come get your vehicle. I go, you better bring some jumper cables. <laughs> I wrote that joke so long ago, that's how you used to hang up a phone. <laughs> you better bring some jumper cables. I hate shopping for a new truck. Them people at the dealership are weird. That boy goes, you take that truck today. You won't make no payments till next year. I go, wow, I ain't never bought a truck from y'all before. How'd you know that? <laughs> Get back, you psychic son of a gun. <laughs> My friend just bought a new truck. I was over at his house. He was showing it off. It has a passenger side airbag. That bag costs $500 to replace after it goes off, but it has an on off switch. So now you're left to decide whether the person you're giving a ride to is worth the money. <laughs> you have a bad accident, you call your wife, hon. I'm okay, but your mama did not have enough cash. <laughs> He bought this thing at Walmart. It's a Garmin. It was $160. He put it in the window of the truck. It goes, turn right, turn left, turn right. Yeah, my wife does that for free. That's what GPS stands for, gal in the passenger seat. I know some of y'all are wanting to laugh at that. You can't, she's sitting right there. There was a guy on TV the other day. He's talking to his car. He's talking to it. It's a car commercial. He goes, music on, in the music, come on. He goes, windshield wipers on. There they go, too. I do that to my truck all the time. Come on, you piece of junk. <laughs> Check engine light off. <laughs> That's my favorite joke right there. If that don't light your fire, your wood is wet. I was driving the other day, I saw a sign on the road that said, school zone, two o'clock to three o'clock, 15 miles per hour. What about them kids that got detention? <laughs> I 
reckon it's open season on these little punks. That teacher being in class, set your butt down and shut up or you're a speed bump. We don't need school zones. We need students that smart enough not to run out in front of a spinning car. Teach that while you got them in school. Reading, writing, run. What happened to your foot, Timmy? I got an F crossing the street. <laughs> you go do your homework tomorrow, they're grading on a curve. <laughs> Thank you. My wife was in the passenger seat. We were driving around. She saw a black cat. She goes, be careful. He'll cross your pie, that's bad luck. For who? I'm in the truck. Thump. He must have forgot his rabbit's foot. I didn't hit him, I had bad luck. I got pulled over by the police. This boy walks right up to my window. He goes, you know why I stopped you? I go, yeah, because my radar detector was stolen. He goes, would you mind stepping back to the patrol car to see how fast I clocked you? I go, look at your machine. If you can't read it, how in the world am I supposed to? <laughs> he goes, what are you, a comedian? I said, son of a gun, you ought to sell trucks. <laughs> Don't drink and drive. Everybody knows that, right? That would make it really hard to text. <laughs> so uh, you can laugh about this. You might as well. Uh, we laugh when it happened. Uh, understand that I've been sober for 11 years. And uh, no, no. I don't tell you that for any reason other than to tell you this story. I drove my truck into a swimming pool. I know, I was there. And my friend was there. I go, I can't swim. He goes, it's an above ground pool, you dumb son of a gun. We were having a good laugh about it till the cop got there and messed it up for everyone. <laughs> what happened here? How you gonna answer that? Uh, above ground pool just pulled right out in front of me. He goes, do the alphabet. I said, I'm gonna sing it. <laughs> but you're putting me on the spot. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, with the oink, oink here. He didn't like the oink, oink here part. He threw me on the hood of the truck. I said, that is police brutality. He goes, no, your hood just pulled right out in front of you. Who said no? <laughs> We're gonna play it anyway. Did you think I was gonna rap? <laughs> he, he's got a guitar and a cowboy hat, I bet she's gonna rap. <laughs> With the hip, the hop, the hip it, hip it, and the hip, hip, hop, you don't stop rocking, back it, and then, bubble the up, chuck, the bucket, the bang, bang, boogie, the bee. I can't believe you're clapping. <laughs> I set out to write the most politically incorrect love song you ever heard. I think I've done it. Here we go. I know I'm just as scared as you are. Well, I was standing by the bar and she stole my heart when her wheelchair rolled my way. She's the handicapped queen of the honky-tonk She's got her very own parking space She lost her leg in a threshing machine But if you play her favorite song She can do the two-step It just takes her twice as long I hold her tight We dance all night Things have never been so good I'll never forget The night we met And I swept her off her foot her 
only physical challenge is keeping her balance on the dance floor when I give her a whirl. But I ain't never had nobody lean on me like my one-legged country girl. <laughs> if you ain't laughing at this, you're gonna hate the song about cancer, I swear. <laughs> Verse two. She can ride the mechanical bull, but seven seconds is her best. It seems that she falls right off every time it turns left. <laughs> Think about that. You advanced people try to figure out which leg it is, kind of fun. You non-advanced people, it's a right leg, here we go. She used to have one that was made of wood. You can blame it on desire. I guess we just got too close when we snuggled up by the fire. I hold her tight. We dance all night. Things have never been so good. She would not run around on me, even if she could. I'm just waiting for you to catch up. We don't do the electric slide. Which to me is funny all by itself. <laughs> For her it's suicide. Cause her lower limbs ain't plural. They're not plural. She's got one. Sure thought we went over that. Ain't never had nobody get that quiet during the plural part or lean on me. One time there was a woman in the audience, she had one leg and she was not happy. And I outran her. One flight of stairs, I never saw her again. <laughs> Hopping mad, it was ridiculous. <laughs> one time there was a guy in the audience and he had one leg, he had a daggum good sense of humor. He popped his fake leg off and he waved it around in the crowd. <laughs> I didn't know what to say. <laughs> he stumped me. Like, oh. <laughs>